Greetings, students, and welcome to another fun-filled day here at Horror in the Halls. <laughs> What's up, kids, and welcome to Horror in the Halls. I'm Bob, a.k.a. Mr. Holland. And I'm Jenny, a.k.a. Mrs. Hill. And we're just two high school teachers talking about the spooky stuff we love. And if you've been following along, February is Black History Month here in the Halls, and in this week's lesson, we are our own worst enemy, as we discuss 2019's Us. Yes. The good one. Sheesh. It cool. was really good. Jordan Peele, sophomore effort. You know, great film. I got to admit, man, I slept on this one. I did. I, I watched it for the first time last night. I This was the first time I've seen it, too, and I was not prepared to like it as much as I did. Oh my God, I was, no. like, prepared to be really freaked out about it and not be able to sleep. <laughs> like I, had, I had some grand thing built up in my brain that I was not going to like this one. Yeah. But I liked it a lot. So no, it was so good. It was so good. It I was. think like I was I was talking to my buddy about it and I think I just watching Key and Pill when it was on, I was like, dude, he's not gonna be able to make good horror movies, dude. You know what I mean? And like so I didn't have yeah. any and the people who I knew who had positive things to say about Get Out were all their opinions were based in the the racial commentary, not in the movie itself. So I was like, Well, yeah. I'm sure it's a good movie. You know, it's not a horror movie, whatever. You know, it was kind of that genre uh ambiguous kind of thing, you know. But this mm-hmm. one so I never even gave this an option. I was just like, mm, whatever. You know, that dude, he's funny. It's rare for the dudes like that to transition over and become good directors. Whatever. Um, I did watch Nope and got kind of like, okay, well, maybe he is better than I was giving him credit for. So I'm glad we did pick this and, and choose to watch it. I am too. Because it's... I don't Johnny really likes um his movies he's oh, he's spoken so very highly of them since he started watching them so oh i'm a convert man like i it's this is probably one of the best horror movies i've seen like and and not so much like in oh it's a gory good horror movie but this movie is like it's like primal you know it it, it taps yes. into that that deep fear that we like to bury and ignore you know all those things mm-hmm. when we were kids that made us run out of the room after you flipped the light switch like yeah it i felt that in my chest at multiple times in this movie like you know what i mean even aaron was like oh my god i feel all this in in my oh i don't, I don't oh, i feel uncomfortable you know what i mean she was just very much like <laughs> i don't know i feel oh uh, and she was trying to explain you know and was, he did like a, a stellar job with this movie it's beyond good i think yeah um, he did and the care the people that he picked for the the movie were amazing and the music all of it's so good i have i have a lot of good things to say about this movie i mean there so. is a lot of good to say so let's yes, get into the, is. the deets real quick, and then we'll get to mm-hmm. it. So again, Us 2019 uh, was originally released March 18th of 2019 at South by Southwest. Um, had widespread release March 22nd of 2019. Running time, 116 minutes. Again, directed by Jordan Pill. Uh, the three films he's directed have been Get Out, Us, and Nope. Also written by Jordan Pill. Well, he's written a few more things. He wrote Keanu, and that was another reason why I didn't want to watch it because I watched Keanu about the weird cat, and it's it's like a Key and Pill movie, sort of. It's weird. Hmm. I don't even and, know what that is. I don't it's strange, and they're both in it, and I was just like, this movie's <laughs> probably gonna be stupid. And I think I, I think I kind of assumed it were the same, and then I heard all the hype, and then you know whatever. Uh, of course, he did Keanu Get Out Us. He wrote the new Candyman, like the remake. Oh, okay. Well. Uh, yeah, he, he wrote okay. Nope, of course, and then he wrote this new animated film called Wendell and Wild okay, that my daughter that said was either. really good. Okay. It's on Netflix, I think. It's pretty solid. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, and let's see here. The cinematography, Mike Giolakis. I'm probably saying that wrong, and again, I'm sorry. Um, but he's he, he got some pretty good stuff, like John Dies at the End, It Follows, uh, Split, Glass, Us, of course, and then Old. So he's worked with M. Night Shyamalan a few times. Oh, okay. No, M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong. He worked with him a few times. Uh, and <laughs> I, I thought Old was terrible, but Split and Glass are actually pretty good, I thought. So that's pretty cool. This thing was like a beyond success, dude. Its budget was $20 million. Its total box office gross was $256 million. Dang, that is big. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge what? increase. Yeah, so it made over two hundred million dollars. Like, I, just, yeah, thanks, it, bro. It was a stellar movie, in your words. It really rad is. stellar. Really is. It was rad, really bro. good. You know, it's fitting. <laughs> it starts in nineteen ninety six. It was totally rad. Yeah. Totally tubular. 
Leave me alone. I mean, it's one of the few I'm, movies. I'm agreeing with you. I just know, I know. that that's know. the word you were going to use. <laughs> it's one of the few horror movies I've seen that has a higher critics rating than it does audience by like a really? lot. Really? Oh, yeah. On Rotten Tomatoes, the critics rating is 93%, but Dang, the audience rating is, is 60. Big. That's big. Yeah, that's huge. You know gap. what? It was a beautiful film and it was very well written i i was like this is really good yeah nothing yeah, I, felt and like it was everything was so intentional and it was all like everything was important like I, if i watched it a second time i probably would see newer things oh yeah I i'm did. gonna the watch first it time i watched it probably multiple times just as um i should have done that this time i'll be honest i procrastinated i should have watched this a week ago and then watched it again and then watched it again to catch more i feel like every time you watch it there'll be a lot of things that maybe you didn't get that you'll get the second time maybe the third time um there's a lot of subtext in this film a lot he said that with each of his movies he's like it's there's so much and everything's so intentional that it like he leaves little nuggets of things throughout the movies and he said each time he watches it again he sees something different so i can see that man because it's yeah yeah it, there's I, I really don't have much negative to say about it really i, I mean really there was some confusing parts that kind of wrapped up later um but the scares are great it's a lot let me let me finish up the details before we get into it um mm-hmm. so yeah 3.7 on letterbox which is pretty good uh it's categorized as a psychological horror film starring lupita is it nango is that how you say her name i'm not really sure how to say her last name unfortunately I've i probably should have looked that up beforehand this. I looked at it, but I should have listened to it, and that's my bad, so I apologize, yeah. guys. Um, she plays Adeline, or Addie, and then also Red, so she is kind of crazy. She plays, like, the hero and the main villain in the movie, which is awesome. So yes. if you haven't seen us, you should turn this off right now. Um, yes, you should. <laughs> her husband, Winston Duke, love him. Love him so much. He's so funny. Uh, he plays Gabe and Abraham. Fun fact, they're both in Black Panther. Yes. Um, then we got... Shahadi Joseph, she plays the daughter Zora, or Umbre, which is kind of cool because that is apparently the plural version of the darkest part of the shadow when the sun is in eclipse. So it kind of oh, okay, is that makes thing. a lot of sense. She was a yeah. creepy. She played creepy. <laughs> yes. yes, she did. Oh uh, man, I think I was more scared of her than I was the other ones. <laughs> I don't know, man. Pluto was weird. Uh, yeah, he was kind of weird. But Evan, Alex. she was she was way more scary than he was. Yeah, she was. Evan Alex plays Jason Wilson. His um, doppelganger version is called Pluto, which, of course, you know, was the god of the underworld. And the mm-hmm. planet was named after that. The former planet was named after that because it's in darkness all the time. So they kind of make up the Wilson family, like the main family of the movie. And like the main first antagonist you see as well, which is really cool. I think, um, yeah, this is a great cast. Elizabeth Moss is in this. She's She plays Kitty Tyler or Dahlia. You got Tim Heidecker. He plays Josh Tyler or Tex. Callie Sheldon and Noelle Sheldon play Becca and Lindsay Tyler. They're their twin daughters who were super creepy in their alternate versions. Yes, their they were. Their tethered version was creepy. Their Io and Nix. Yeah, was so perfect. creepy. And there were some different people who played. There was a funny cast that made me laugh the names as i read these are a lot of these have like intentional names so at the very beginning i'm just going to jump into it because that's the main cast jordan peele has a voice role in here everybody else is kind of like a little bit of an extra they don't have main roles but duke nicholson is in this and i I think i was telling you this early in the hallway his character's name is danny and tony in his alternate version but he's at the very beginning when uh, the dad is throwing the baseballs and gets the thriller t-shirt he's like the carny Mm -hmm. guy oh okay I was wondering who the who you were talking about because I wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. Well, I had to go back and check and watch it. But I, I, when I was doing my research, apparently Jordan Peele, whenever he asked him how he wanted him to play the character, he said, "I want you to kind of act like um, the bartender in The Shining." And as you can tell from the names, they're based on The Shining, which is really funny because Duke Nicholson is Jack Nicholson's grandson. But apparently, at the That's time, awesome. Jordan Peele didn't know that. He just thought he was a young extra actor. He was like, oh, crap, you're talking what? And I think that might be why his name is Danny and Tony, probably. But I just think that's really funny that he had no idea. Told him to act like a character from one of his grandfather's movies, which I think is hilarious. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, great cast on this movie. I love the the duality of this film uh, with the two roles playing across. I think that's really cool. I, I really don't, I can't think of a negative thing to say about this movie in all reality. Not one. No, there's so much, there's so much to, there's so much to unpack. <laughs> so I'm like, Oh, I, I made sure to put some detailed like notes for myself. So I know not to jump all over the place because it can't, the time skips at first were a little jarring, but then as the movie progressed, it wasn't as bad because I was like, okay, so this is what he's doing. 
Because I have a hard time with time skips anyway, even if they're done really well, because I'm like, what is happening? Because I'm not expecting it. Same thing with books. Like if I'm reading a book and there's a time skip, I'm like, wait, where are we at here? Yeah. But um, it just takes me a minute. But once I get the hang of it, I'm like, OK, we're going backwards a little bit. So I thought they were all very well done after after I got the hang of it. So. Yeah, it made sense. Like mm-hmm. once you got through there and understood what was going on. Oh, another fun thing. Um, the guys that play her parents when they're at the boardwalk mm-hmm. like the guy that plays her dad um i think his name is yaya abdul martin I th- i'm saying his first name wrong and i apologize i really should listen to these i meant to today and it was a busy day so i'm sorry but he is also he's in the new candy man he is, is essentially he, candy man yeah i was gonna say is he is, is he play candy man okay yeah he, he, he <laughs> because i haven't watched the new, new one man. i need to watch the new one yeah well you probably i'm glad you watched the first one first you know but yeah he uh i watched it, i was like hold up okay okay i see you candy man that's maybe why we got cast in the other movie but yeah he did they do a good job they have alternates as well named wayland and eartha okay everyone's got an interesting I, alt- alternate I, just, I like all this i do too i like that they're, that they're called the tethered that yeah. is really interesting. I like it's something different, and it makes it made sense. Yeah, it's a really cool like, um, especially because he based it starting in the eighties. So you get like that kind of weird like seventies throwback to like the MK Ultra kind of like human experiments with stuff they were doing that people accuse mm-hmm. the CIA of doing in the seventies and eighties. And it was cool to kind of like play into that fear of the time, especially during like the Cold War and uh, like the punk view towards reagan era especially see there's a lot of punk band and punk like um references in this film like a lot of people wearing black flag shirts there's a lot of like music that kind of fits that time frame you see like some that kind of aesthetic especially looking at some of the the characters oh my gosh the music i i made a note at the beginning when the movie started um i I said what the hell is this music it was so creepy it was this choral music and it was accompanied by like tribal drums and cymbals and then it just like progressively got like more intense and i'm like that is the kind of stuff that i remember when i watched the shining yeah yeah that's the kind of music that's in this and i I was like that's what he was going for yeah he he had to because it it was spot like i it gave me cold chills, just the music alone. It wasn't even anything going on. It was just the music was like, whoa, this is a lot. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's what led to it. Like, it, I felt it mm-hmm. in my chest, man. Like, it was there. Yes. So let's talk about, Absolutely. like, I guess, I love the 80s opening. Uh, like, uh-huh. I don't. I did too. I have vague memories of Hands Hands Across America just because there were so many commercials. But I remember <laughs> that. Like, I was like four. But I remember, like, um, commercials and references to it. I remember, like, my, my mom might have had a t-shirt or something. Like, I have memories of that, you know, and that, that's kind of crazy mm-hmm. how you kind of use that as his inspiration. And he said in an interview one time that he just came across a Hands Across America, like, spot on YouTube and thought it was, like, kind of weird. It had, like, that almost, like, Norman Rockwell, like, fake lipstick on the pig of America kind of feel to it. Yeah. You know, dressing up of the horribleness of the country at the time, especially in the 80s. You know, we had just gotten, we were starting the war on drugs. We had like the AIDS epidemic. All that stuff was happening in the 80s and it was fairly terrible in America. I think it was gritty and dirty and kind of gross. And yeah. uh, so he's like, he thought it was a great idea to add. But I kind of love that beginning. Yeah, with the especially boardwalk the boardwalk was carnival. great. And yes. A cool thing about that is, is that Lost Boys came out in 1987 and is shot on the same boardwalk. And the mom, okay. that's the comment the mom makes. They're filming in a movie over by the carousel you should go see if you should be an extra because in 1986 they were filming the lost boys in santa cruz on the boardwalk so that's like oh. the reference she makes which i thought was kind of cool i was like oh, okay, i didn't even catch neat. that that's great yeah like when they're walking after she's wearing the shirt she's like, oh yeah yeah they're filming a movie over there you should go see if you should be an extra and the dad's like nah nah we're good but that's the movie they're talking about i did have to do a little bit of digging well, not digging, but I looked up the verse that was on the ca- piece of cardboard that oh, the guy yeah. was holding. The Jeremiah eleven eleven. Yeah, so I'm gonna read that really quick so that we, because I think it is the most like, because I was like, this has to be important to the Which story. Which version are you reading it? Which version? I'm are you reading? reading. Well, I'm reading a uh, King James version. That's the one. You that's what pop. Yeah. Okay. That's the so, darker one. King James. Is yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. I was like, yeah. oh, my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, oh it's kind of dark. Like, cause it's mm-hmm. for what it's talking about at the time, you know, and 
it, it plays a dual role. It talks about just like how they're setting up this takeover or this them this coming up from the underground, but also how Red's character is kind of like a messiah for them, right? Like they were yes. abandoned and left, and she becomes the mm-hmm. leader of not just that group of them, but like all of them. Because yes. you kind of get that idea at the end that these things are everywhere. Yeah, because at the beginning, it I had to I had to be quick with reading because there's intro like lines like yeah. stuff, and it talks about like how things kind of lurk in tunnels and in caves and like dark places. And I'm like, that was kind of like, okay, well, the, like you said, they're everywhere, but they're where the sun doesn't touch. And then they're not yeah. known because they're hidden. So yeah, I, I got that impression after it took me a minute, but I did at the, you know, I'm not going to give away the end yet, but that's, that's where my head was going. I was like, so these things are everywhere. You know, what's crazy. That verse, like I looked it up last night. And I went for like, when I look at my Bible, it's always like the new living or one of the newer translations. Yeah, It's still kind of dark though. It says in the new living says, therefore, this is what the Lord says. I am going to bring calamity upon them and they will not escape. Though they beg for mercy, I will not listen to their cries. I'm like, dang. Yeah. That's dark. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the tethered, it's like they're all these forgotten people and they come up from these places because they want what the others have and that they weren't given, which is kind of sad. Um, uh, yeah, hundred percent. And then just to think that, well, I'm, I'm coming up here and he's not going to hear you. That's kind of yeah. how I took it. I'm like, ain't nobody hearing y'all. Well, I think, um, and there's a lot of themes of, of rabbits and 11, 11 all throughout this movie. Mm-hmm. But you look at the way I was thinking about it, like um, with the whole not hearing their cries and how, the tethered speak how it's guttural and they can't talk like only red can talk yeah which like, i was confused about for a while until yeah, we figured until out it why clicks. you're like oh, and right. i'm like oh my god yeah. that's like you just punched me in the gut i know right um but i was thinking <laughs> that's why the, you know have you noticed when they attacked the ones they killed they slit their throats i think mm-hmm. it's so they can't speak oh yeah because a lot like jordan pillar said a bunch of times that this movie is about like um it, it's about duality of everything but also about like uh it's, it's more about class than anything else but it's about people that have versus the have nots and mm-hmm. like um uh, americans as as a country's privilege how we think we're we're special because we're born here kind of vibe right and the, in this movie it's like well the and always want more yeah like the regular people are, are special because that's how they are and the tether are just left behind because no one yeah because gabe them. he throughout the whole first of the movie he's trying to keep up with jason it's not yeah. Jason, Josh. Yeah, Jason's, Sorry, yeah, Josh. Yeah, yeah, Josh. And I'm like, but you have a place to stay and a family mm-hmm. that you're with. I mean, it was like a nice area too. I'm like, how can you like? But at the same time, I'm like, I get it. Once you have something, you just want a little bit more. And I feel like you know they kind of rubbed it in a little bit too. Yeah. But... It's like keeping up with the Joneses, kind of. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's stupid, but yeah, I... he did play on that really well. He did. It was it was a good job, man. Like it, I really don't have I have nothing really negative to say about this movie. I tried to I think s- there's a couple things that I was like, why did they do that? But it's a very horror movie approach. Mm-hmm. A couple times I was that person yelling at the screen, like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing that? Get back in the car. Like <laughs> like Yeah, I was like her the little girl like at the or Addie at the be that's what they called her, right? Addie. Yeah, Addie. Yeah. Like, um, at the beginning when she wanders off, I'm like, oh my God, why are you walking down into that place? It is creepy. And then uh, it was a mirror maze and I've been yeah. in a mirror maze, which they're kind of stressful. I had fun walking through it, but essentially it's like, am I going to get stuck in here? But when she walked up and that thing was just sitting there, I was like, what on earth yeah. is happening? Because I'm like, she turned around and it didn't turn around too. And I was like, I thought turned it around. Uh, I was like, oh my God, it's just two of them. <laughs> <laughs> like no like and it doesn't God. really show anything but her face and like the yeah, terror her on her face big. but then and that's i think that such was a such job. a good yeah. yeah that was such a good like i didn't see the other thing so yeah. i was questioning it yeah the whole Man. time the whole time I'm yeah like, why, why'd she do that i'm like hmm, huh, i wonder why and then it's like oh oh that's crazy you know you're like i know why you did yeah. that um yeah <laughs> It was nuts. And I like the little Jason's wearing a Chewbacca mask the whole time. I thought that was kind of fun. Yes. I thought, okay. So the part where she, well, first of all, let me stop 
for a second and talk about the rabbits. I was really confused at that scene. I was like, why is this here? What, the beginning? Yeah, when it's like it keeps painting outward, the camera does, and like the, the wall is just full of like cages full of rabbits. I'm like, are they doing some kind of experiments or something? Or like, what is going on? And then I, then I saw like desks. I'm like, yeah. is this a classroom? Like, what is happening? And then, and then it comes like full circle and goes back to like current day Addie and her family. And I'm like, oh, what is the hell is happening <laughs> so that's the part where i got really lost i'm like i don't understand what's happening and then once i started seeing the flashbacks i was like okay this is starting to make more sense now but like at first i was like i then i forgot all about the rabbits because i was more concerned about the random homeless guy that keeps popping up with the 11 11 and then like her being scared of the beach and then him having that conversation with her about like you know just enjoying themselves and blah 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 yeah. it was just you know i got kind of annoyed with gabe at the beginning but he he grew on me yeah i kind of was annoyed with all of them like their way their interactions you're like why are you why are you like this but then you kind of get it because he what he, he's trying to say something and they're acting that way to kind of emphasize that um which i think is really cool to your rabbit comment apparently he picked those because he's afraid of rabbits he thinks oh, they're creepy he? and weird and if I love they have no empathy or sympathy and they would kill you if they could that's what <laughs> I like rabbits. I think they're pretty, they're cute. I don't know. I mean, I don't own a rabbit or anything. I had a friend that owned one, and he chewed up my book, so he's a jerk. But other than that. Yeah, apparently he's just like, you know, into having things show up. So there's rabbit references everywhere because he's afraid of them. You know, okay. there's 11 references anywhere. I think there's why there's so many people wearing black flag shirts because the bars are 11-11. So it's just a lot of okay, a lot of that, which is interesting. Well, let me see here. Um, the, the moment on the beach when she loses... Um, or she loses sight of Jason. That freaked me out. That's yeah. like my worst nightmare. Looking up and I can't see my children. My thing about that was if you're so full of anxiety and nervous like about what's going on, how did you even let him get away from you at that point? I know, right? Well, I think it's because she was so annoyed with point. Dahlia or how yeah, you say her name. she was very annoying. She she was kind of demanding her attention and I think she she kept looking she did keep looking over at him and then all of a sudden he's up and he's gone yeah and it's like a split second and that's all it takes is you look away one second and then your kids are off running somewhere I'm like look I there's so many times where I'm like I would look at them before I would go, would go into the store and be like you better not walk away from me. You will hold on to the cart. Yeah. Like I'm not, we're not doing this. Oh, I used to make Adeline ride in the cart. You're going to ride in the cart because you think you can just run away and be grown. And <laughs> I know it's your worst nightmare that one of them running off. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. The, a beach full oh. of people. And then yeah. no, absolutely not. You stay yeah. right here. So hundred percent, hundred percent. I don't even like when we're going hiking and like Hayden walks ahead of us. I'm like, if I can't see you're too far. I said, mm -hmm. I don't know these people on this trail. So that's like one of my worst nightmares. Like that kind of made me nervous that part. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh, please don't like, let anything happen to him this early in this movie. She'd be back as basket case. But, um, so between that and like upon coming home and I'm seeing the, like, or the the lights like all the electricity going out and that yeah. they're he's like we don't have a backup generator and blah 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 and then they're like um there's a family in the driveway yeah what what do you I mean know. a whole family is in the driveway oh creepy there's a family in the driveway that was funny yeah, i like that part where he tries to drop into like he tries to sound all hood like yeah i know right get out my driveway <laughs> He's really funny, man. I've seen him in a couple other movies that are not Black Panther, you know, where he's playing that character. And he's like mm -hmm. really hilarious as an actor. He's a good, he does a good job. Yeah. And he, the bat, like what's the bat going to do? Nothing. I mean, if you, he went out there beforehand, you know, but he wouldn't have known they were. I know. Weird I'm just mutants. like in my brain. I'm like, the bat's not going to do anything. But um, yeah, that was the, that, I think that was more creepy to me. I think that was the most creepy part of the movie was them standing at the top of their driveway. You can't see their faces, but you can see that there's, there's silhouettes yeah. and like kind of what they're wearing and they're all yeah. wearing the same thing. And you're like, and they're just holding hands. Very yeah. much like the hands across America. They're spaced yes. out perfectly. Like those little um, yes. characters you cut with scissors you see later. Yeah. Oh. I like no. that, man. And then like that, that was one of those good. times where the tension's building real heavy and you can feel it. And then when she makes that sound and the kids split off like Oh my animals, gosh, yes. You're like, oh, what the, what the hell is that? 
Yeah, and they're fast. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, why are they so fast? I think it's the way the boy moves too, because he's moving like like he's not human. He's animalistic almost. Yeah, yeah and he's the, moving like the, a creature. And the girl, yeah, and I think that was meant to look like because he kind of with that um, what are those called? It's like a compression. Yeah, it's a burn mask. Like people have burn yes. mask on their face. Um, which wonder where she had, got it, which it is interesting. Yes. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, it was creepy.com. Yes, he when he pulled that mask up over his face, I was like, oh my god, that is terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, but it made sense why I had that. But like, that's the question I had in my brain, like the whole time I was watching the movie, is like when they finally get into the house, like all of them. Yeah. And they ha they're all sitting across from each other and she's speaking, but the other ones are just kind of like clicking you know, and grunting. Click yeah, yeah. like that that was what animals do that? Is that bats? That's kind of. Or they kind of make that clicking sound, like to talk back and forth. I'm not sure. I don't know either. Maybe I'm I'm, I'm like messed up on that. But it might anyways, be I'm sure. Use like a because it may it would make sense to me. Yeah. You know, especially since they they would be un, you know underground and stuff. Like some of them would be in like darker places. I don't know. Well, yeah, anyway, especially if they've been abandoned since the 80s. Yeah, that's terrible. You know what just I mean? kind of like, like just walking around. Yeah, they're just abandoned to to do whatever. Yeah. Um, Which is weird that no one, there was no scientist or there was no like locked door. They were just free to leave the beach whenever they wanted. Yeah, where it's weird. Which was kind of strange, especially because Adeline's character knows how to get out. Yeah. So I wonder who unlocked her too. There's so many questions I have about this movie. Like, but I, I loved all of it, but there were so many questions. Like, but I guess back to where you are in this description, that scene when she's talking and they come in and like the way they move and yes. how like she is so off putting. How she like turns, how she moves. She always walks like a dancer everywhere she goes, which is very odd. You know, she's very like kind of small steps and her back is really arched and straight. Yeah. And she, and when she talks, it's very like she hasn't used her voice in a long time. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. It's very, um, what is the word? I don't even know. It's like, like horse almost. Yeah. And like she could barely get out the words because she's been silent for so long. But I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, maybe she learned how to speak or something. Like I was just like trying yeah. to like reason with my brain. Like I don't know, understand why she's the only one talking. I thought maybe she uh, was just more successful or she was a better yeah. copy. I thought the same thing. I was trying to figure out why. Apparently she based all that on how Robert F. Kennedy Jr. spoke. Interesting. Because he's got dysphonia. So like she was okay. had vocal coaches and stuff. So she didn't hurt her voice. But how she she could talk all horse like that all the time. Well, that makes sense. But I think too, she did a great job oh, doing dude. two different characters, two two severely different yeah, characters. And something that was really cool, and if you've watched it, you'd notice over the course of the film, Addie, her normal human mannerisms start to unravel, and she starts to act more like the tethered. How she's kind of, she's some grunts, the way she talks, her movement. She has these weird staring off yeah. moments where she's like not, almost like someone who's like severely autistic, almost the way she is interacting with people and how she is starting to slowly be different, right? Because like towards the end, like I figured out the twist, I guess, before he showed it to us, I was like, hold up. Because the way she starts acting, you're like, oh so, no, no. <laughs> Especially when she walks yeah, down there so and knows exactly where she's going. I thought I knew the twist at the beginning, and he tri he he was so good at what he did in the movie that I changed my mind. So when it happened at the end, I was like, "What?" So I was right at the beginning. Like he yeah. had me so twisted throughout the whole movie. I I thought that I like it when I'm tricked into thinking something, and then something yes. else happens. Yes. But so I think that the fact that he was able to do that made me love the movie even more because usually I'm really good at picking out what's going to happen and what the twist is. And I, it really aggravates me. Yeah, I think I it's because of all the books I've read. It ruins it a little bit. Yeah, it does. And that he did such a good job where I thought, okay, well, I'm wrong. There's, there's something else going on here. But to what you said, the, her becoming more like the tethered, I, I just dawned on me that like she was starting to show remorse for them as they died. Yeah. Like she wanted to go see the kids. Yeah. Yeah, because they're like her. Like, after you figure it out at the end, you're like, oh, because at the time, I thought that's one of those moments where I was like, why is she getting out of the fucking car? What are you doing? Get back in the and car. And they were all asking her that. Yeah. They were like, where are you going? She's yeah. like, I just, I have to go. Just and keep the door And she kept trying shut. to touch the girl because she's like her. You know what I mean? She's not. Yeah. I do think... Once you find out, like, when she tells the story, you know, I think maybe her tethered was a success 
of the, over the other ones like she was a better one obviously she was able to learn to interact and be part of society as she grew up in it yeah. right so it was all about mm-hmm. i think it had another commentary on nature versus nurture yes because you see one of them who was born to it ended up acting more like them because even though red is really a, a normal human born she wasn't created you know she's she's the original i guess the one that that abby's tethered to she is acting like all the other ones with the the spastic movements and like just the odd whereas because that's that's how she was essentially raised from the time she was down there she had to grow in that right and mm-hmm. whereas abby grew in society with people and was able to pick up speech and pick up mannerisms of a normal human being and become a successful human being yeah because when they had her in counseling at the, at like the next like flashback and her mom yeah. was like i just want my little girl back like that's yeah. the moment when i was like because it ain't her yeah and then i then he got me all wrapped up and thinking it wasn't that wasn't it oh yeah and, oh yeah but i was like I, I was so blown away by the ending like i was, I was like oh my gosh i did not expect yeah. this at all I was but like all but yeah her good going through like they're like well this is how you're going to help her get back to normal you're, you're gonna show her you're gonna teach her how to like music and how to draw and how to dance and do all these things and that's like you said it's it's the nurturing part like you're you're parenting someone who has seen something terrible yeah. and helping them through that um a cool thing i noticed or i read rather was that he gave the cast 11 films to watch so they would have a shared language when filming like he wanted them to have these in their mind you know so he gave them mm-hmm. jaws dead again the shining the baba duke it follows a tale of two sisters the birds funny games martyrs let the right one in and the sixth sense all those Those were some really interesting picks for movies yeah to have them have the shared kind of view i gotta say like i can't it was so successful like you said um there's a lot of throws to these movies right like the intro or when you first see the Wilsons and they're driving in their car. You got that aerial shot with the kind of eerie, a little bit music in the sun. That's straight out of the shining, like a hundred percent. It's mm-hmm. beautiful, but it's straight out of the shining is a really good job. Um, there's some <clears throat> long shots they do that are very reminiscent of Jaws, like some of those alert shots, like on the beach, like when she wakes up and realizes he's gone. That's very reminiscent of like the sheriff, you know, like there's a shark and her yeah. looks the same. Uh, the kid's wearing a Jaws shirt too, which is funny. Oh my gosh, he is wearing a Jaws yeah. shirt. I just. Hmm. see that's what i'm saying i'd have to watch this movie again to catch some of that 40 times and funny games is like about (laughs) home and home invasion kind of weirdness and it's very much what happens to them like you try to fight back and you can't um and that whole scene is just so good and uh yeah like lupita did such a good job oh my god like playing two characters in the same scene is why didn't she win something for this movie i don't know she should have she should have i want to like burn the city down over that why did she not get anything for that horror movies hardly ever win anything um that's so stupid that is so stupid because this is such a the critic score was even really high you said so like i don't understand it is a piece of art it's still art i agree she was nominated um for a best actress in 2019 for this movie i mean she did get nominated for it i think oh, she probably she should have won. won it um Who won that year? in the i don't know in let's see the african-american oh, film critics association she won for best actress well um, that's good at least the alliance of women film journalists she won for best actress let's see she got nominated by american film awards let's see for the austin film critics association she won for best actress she it's won deserved. she won a lot uh-huh. of awards she didn't get like a like an oscar or nothing but she won a lot of awards but she should she's have. an amazing actress i'm yeah. gonna give her that like straight up she she killed this movie like so hard like i like it, it's cool that so many people like acknowledged it it sucks that like the academy didn't again yeah, well they they're lame she did such a good job <laughs> she that- did oh my gosh i i was very impressed i all the actors really did a great job but she did an amazing job uh, because yeah. those those two dueling characters are so vastly different and like the way she interacts with herself in the movie is just really cool yes Ugh. yeah yeah, you know, it, it was cool and creepy and just really well done. Like, it was really well done. I really have no, again, I keep saying it over and over again because it's true. I have nothing bad to really say. There were some scenes where I was like, wow, but it wasn't like a, I'm so mad at you. You know, it was like, okay, I mean, you did that. I'm not sure why you did that, but you so should have. So the, the end when she's in the car and she, it finally like dawns on her 
who she really is. It's like she forgot who she was, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Almost like, well, I mean, she her whole goal was to get out and to yeah. become that. And then she was like, I'm going to go. And her, when her and Red were talking at the end and she was saying, like, you could have taken me. Or it might, it might have been when she originally talked to her. She goes, you could have taken me with you. Yeah. Like, we could have went together mm-hmm. and it would have been fine. Okay, it would have been well, weird here's my but they would already yeah <laughs> i know right but like she was like you could have taken me with you but you didn't you chose not to and then at the end when it was like she was she wanted her to die for sure yeah but at the same time it was like a part of herself was dying too and then in the car when she's like realizing who she really is because she is the, actually the tethered yeah and she looks over at Jason, her son, and he knows. Yeah. He knows exactly who she is. Yeah, he and he's kind of weird, too. too. Yeah, he's yeah. very weird. He's very, and it makes more sense as to why he was the way he was. Because he's more like her, and the daughter is more like the dad, who is not a tethered. No. And then I was like, oh, my God, that is so messed up. And Johnny is looking at me. He's like, I know. Like, he was so excited. I was like, yeah. oh, my God, that is crazy. Well, I think he started to realize something weird is when she kills that second twin with the scissors Mm -hmm. he's like he gives her a really strange like uncomfortable look yeah and then leaves you know what i mean like before they even Mm -hmm. leave so yeah let's talk about them for a second dude that family was wild like um the The tethered family or are you talking about the well the tyler's just in general whenever they when their tethered showed up like the way like tex was moving how he was like wide-legged walking down the stairs like he was kind of like wobbling the whole time and Uh then like the mom version of her like her name her name original name was kitty her tethered version was dahlia just looked really sad and crazy and she would cry and then laugh but the two twin yeah, girls that were was a creepy. so creepy. When they walked well, the stairs and looked down at the, everyone else, you're like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I made a note, too. Like, because the family at the beginning with, like, Addie and them, they took their time. The white family came in, yeah. and they, they just fucked each other up real fast. <laughs> They're like, I'm going to stab you in the throat. Well, yeah, I noticed that. I wasn't sure if it was, like, um, I don't know why. Because I, I, we've talked about that, too. Because I asked her, I said, why did everyone else die super fast? But she doesn't even kill... Addie, like Dahlia could have murdered her. She had her, she had her handcuffed to her bed. But I think because Red really is a human and not a tethered, she probably was like, don't kill me. I think she kind of wanted to do it. You know what I mean? Like, but I think she wanted to make her understand what she did to her. Yeah. Well, she did because when she sat down, she was like, when she was telling that story in the beginning, I was like, gosh, that is so sad. She was like, when you were so happy and you were doing, you know, you're having your your children, she's like, and you were cared for, I had to cut them out myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it was dark. The whole shadow story was dark. A little yes, girl had it a was. Shadow. It was that. That's the part where I. You remember earlier when you were like, I just felt like something was on me. That's kind of how I felt when she was telling that story. Like it felt so wrong that she had such a horrible existence, and that shadows that had or the tethered had such a horrible existence. Yeah. But I. It, I didn't. It, it also didn't dawn on me that everyone was gonna have one. Yeah. What's Even though is, I should have picked that up, but I didn't. There's such a correlation with them too. Like mm-hmm. my kids look just like your kids. My husband yeah. or my partner looks just like yours. Even though there's no real reason why the tethered would have had that. It's just because the people upstairs did. You know, because mm-hmm. when she shows that flashback and like people are on the little uh, Himalaya type tilt like spinny ride and they're yeah, in that room that just so running creepy. in circles and like they're shoving like random food at each other it was really weird it was like watching a zombie movie of zombies trying to be normal yes you know what I mean like in those um new dawn of the deads and uh day of the deads where like they're trying to relive their old life like the dude pumping gas stuff like that it had that it was very reminiscent of that and I really thought that was pretty rad like a way to kind of show that these people are us you know, and she kind of hints at yeah. that when he says, who are you? He, she says, we're Americans. It's like, what? Okay. What? <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was dark and creepy and I loved it. Yeah. And you were talking about Dahlia. She, her character was so, I think hers was just as creepy as the, um, what is her, Umbre. Them two were the creepiest ones in my, yeah. in my book. I think because the, two, the two twins and Umbre are creepy. Yes, absolutely. Umbre was really like, like, hold on. Pluto was like very primal and yes. like animalistic like he was ready to like yeah, set like everything on fire and yeah he was just 
Yeah. She was like the Joker, just very like crazy. I'm going to smile at you weird and then stab yeah. you. I kind of dug that. And that's why I liked her and the twins, how they're like walking on their hands and then mm-hmm. like flipping into scenes and killing people. And they're, like, and they're quiet. It, like it doesn't, yeah. you don't, I think, and he did that on purpose too. Cause like, like I've said before on a previous episode, we we're talking about like soundstage like a sound mm-hmm. stage, he purposely didn't put that sound in because it was they were supposed to be very quiet, like almost like shadows. Like yeah, if you're like watching Peter Pan yeah. and you don't hear you don't hear a shadow. So yeah. like, oh my gosh, it was it that's like runs all over you. Like, oh, they could just be anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, so. it's very the the movements of all of them were very off putting and that was it really led to the the scariness of the film. Yes. Uh, the way they interacted with each other Mm -hmm. was very just uncomfortable, you know, and how Jason and Pluto were so connected and Jason was able to figure that out when he starts backing up, you know, and then Pluto just walks in the fire. Doesn't care. He's just, yeah. And she's like reaching out to Pluto. Like she's devastated that he walked in. I'm like, why is she so sad about that? And I'm like, he's crazy. I thought it was weird too. Cause I mean, that is not her child. Like you gave birth to normal children. But I think she feels like a kinship to them. Yeah, she does. But you don't know that until like Although you were actually legitimately figure it out. She murdered that one twin like it was nothing. Well, you know she I mean? was trying to murder her. Yeah, I mean, Pluto, whereas he kind of he was about to blow their car up. He was, but he hadn't done it yet, and yeah. it was like she was trying to get him not to do it. And then Jason was like, "Nah, dude, yeah. he's gotta go." Taking him out. Um, I liked how Red said we call it the untethering because they yeah. just wanted. To take over the life up yeah. above and like live the life that the they deserved. One. Yeah. Brutally murdering the other one. Yes. Yeah, I got some crazy. funny notes about this family being ignorant or making d- terrible decisions. That whole scene of them leaving was like, why are you doing this? Why did you do that? Do something else. <laughs> what? Yeah. Who? What are you talking about? Everything they do while they're driving. Like, I oh, love yeah. the, I wrote one of my favorite parts. I wrote a note where like, when they get into um, the Tyler's house and he doesn't want to leave because like everything Gabe's ever yeah, wanted stupid. is in this house. Everything's ever wanted is in this house. Big house, mm-hmm. fancy boat. They got a nice car that's nicer than what he has. And everything he's ever kind of aspired for, he now has because there's literally dead bodies two feet behind him on the ground. And she's like, it's time to run, not sprinkle micro machines on the floor. And I was like, some Home Alone type traps. And I thought that was so funny. And she was like, what are you babbling about? Like, it's time to run. You the don't make decisions like, anymore. micro machines? Yeah. What's Home Alone? <laughs> Oh my God. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I was like, what an idiot. Why would you stay? There's no safe place there. No. And he made a lot of dumb decisions in the whole he film. Did. Like the whole thing. I will say when he kills his his uh his tethered with that boat motor, that was mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. How the time he just headbutts it and it and pulls him under. I was like, that was wild. <laughs> Oh, Abraham got chopped to pieces. I like how they had a tally in the car. They were like, I've killed, I've killed more than you, uh, so I get to drive. I'm yeah. like, no, get out of the car. Yeah, their daughter was annoying. I'd have been like, get out of the seat right now. I don't care if yeah. you've killed. Get out of my seat. I'm going to punch you in the face. Yeah. It's not the time. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> get in the back. Shut up. And no one would know because everyone is dying. Yeah. So you best get out of the I'll way. I'll blame it on your tethered counterpart. Now get in the back. <laughs> Oh. oh my god yeah that she was ridiculous her character was kind of annoying i like the tethered well, versions of them better really yes that might be why i found her so aggravating <laughs> uh, truthfully i'm like oh my god i have oh i have you god. in class i hate you um yeah. <laughs> it's so true but I'm yeah sorry I gotta say you. us i definitely understand i had a note about this i understand all the hype for jordan peele now like it was completely taken off off guard by some of it yeah i was just like oh okay okay you know and it's it it speaks a lot to the quality of of writing um of directing and of acting apparently lupita would stay in in character between 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 takes as red like she would remain red which apparently everyone on the cast and crew did not like because she'd be like all creepy moving at people and stuff and grunting which is interesting uh here's the thing though because when you anybody who's ever played like the joker will all tell you that they kind of had to stay as much in character as they could be to embody the character of Joker because he's so crazy. Yeah. And sometimes it was hard to break from it because of that. So I wonder how hard it was for her after the movie was done to break free from that character a little bit. I don't know. It might have been difficult. I'm not, I mean, because 
I feel like every time I've heard about the Joker, that's what people have said. Like anybody that's played him, because he's you know messed up. <laughs> so. Yes, it's a hard one. Um, yeah, I've heard to remove you know remove yourself from that, mm-hmm. especially when you played it for however long it takes you to film. You know, mm-hmm. you get used to being that character every day and trying to stay in character on set. I mean, you're on set most of the day. It's a you know. Yep. It's a long, it's a long day. So she did a great job. I I don't know. I've said it a thousand times, but I I was very impressed. But she did, like I said, and it it it's credit to the writing. It's it's a very well done movie. There's a lot of great references in it. There's a lot of great original things in it. Um, just some really deep kind of things that you wouldn't necessarily catch the first time. Like I had to read about them. Like stuff like um, let's see here. Let me find one. Like the fast food they're eating is called Copper Pots, which is a nod to the treasure hunter and the goonies yeah which is one of the films on on her shelf next to her tv at the beginning and then there's chud which is about like the subterranean humanoids which is essentially what they are i saw that and and i didn't even put it in my notes and like um the nods are his kind of and it's cool when you think about it because like the way they're dressed and the mirrors all that stuff the white rabbit all that is has ties to alice in wonderland the single glove all that stuff right but think about who their leader is like you know the true Addie is like what 12 when she gets taken 10 like she's young it's her birthday she's pretty young yeah Yeah, so you're basically being led by a person whose last connection to the world is of the mind of a child like she goes down there with the michael jackson shirt on Mm -hmm. in her hands across america t-shirt you know i mean those are the last things that she has a direct connection to so how they're acting how they're dressing the things that they think are normal are from the mind of a child because that i mean honestly she stops developing at that time because you're underground mm-hmm. there's no input there's no books there's no tv there's nothing there's just people who grunt at you and don't say anything and um you know so like i thought that was really interesting it made a lot of things i was confused about in the movie make sense when i looked at it from that um point of view and it's cool to me that she became such a feral person and how the actual tethered that went up that that became addy was so far removed that she hardly could fight back at times. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that yeah. is so interesting. And I know, like you said, it's a, it's all nature versus nurture type thing, but it was just really, it was a cool twist. And it, you know, it, it just, it blew me away. It was like, oh my gosh. I, I, you don't think about like what, how different you would be if you didn't have the family around you or the friends around you that, you know, help you along the way to make you let, you know, have that nurturing part of yourself. So I I thought the like that primal um, instinct that he applied to the story was really cool. So, but he's very Twilight Zone ish in that, in that movie. And I don't really like Twilight Zone stuff. I get really aggravated with it, but I really liked this um, movie a lot. It's funny. There was a Twilight Zone episode that was an inspiration for it. Really? Yeah. That and, uh, let's see, Twilight Zone episode. And apparently when Jordan Peele was in college, he got off the train at this place that had like a weird underground tunnel you had to go through to go back into the town. And he said he always had like these, like, what if like my doc could see my doppelganger safe self turning a corner like right behind right before me and like you know it was his whole idea he said it made him kind of be uncomfortable and he'd like to Mm -hmm. start that movie with that yeah doppelgangers is like a such a creepy idea oh yeah of someone looking like you and trying to act like you or so oh i can't that that would be so so terrifying 100 percent like a lot of it is terrifying. Um, mm-hmm. And when we get into like the rubric, there's so many like things I want to point out, you know, and like, I, yeah, I just really like this movie. It's done really well. It's written really well. It's shot beautifully. There's so much subtext that I, I know I need to watch it an, at least one more time, maybe two. Like I noticed, I just, like right before we started recording, I watched the first five minutes just to make sure that it was that Carney character that was Duke Nicholson. And I was, I caught things I didn't catch the first time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like so many things. Another, like my last little fun fact here, another cool thing, all those scenes of people on rides were shot with dummies and then the people are cg oh it, my gosh that's funny. every person that's not like an actor speaking is cg another funny thing oh my god the dude at whack-a-mole i thought mm-hmm. was josh gad i was like is that josh gad with a beard wearing a black flag shirt and we had to look it up <laughs> and i was like oh okay that's weird that's not him because i really did think it was him it made me laugh it's like dustin yabara and i was like okay I could have swore you were freaking Josh Gad, dude. I don't even know. But yeah, I thought it was funny. Well, you want to do the rubric? Heck yeah, man. 
Cue the rubric. Let's do it. All right, so we'll start off with, uh, as usual, our rubric, the literary element. Each category is worth 25 points in jumps of five. So we'll, again, have the script, story development, dialogue, and character development. We don't even have to discuss. This is 25 all day long. This is a 25, absolutely. A, and it, I would fight anybody who wants to disagree with me. It's an MF and 26, bro. I'm saying. It was so good. It was so well written. Yeah, I mean, the characters, there's a couple little things that are snags, but he he, tie, he ties up those loose ends later in such mm-hmm. a real, such a good way. The, yeah, I, just, I, I don't have a lot to say about it. Like, it's so good. The dialogue is great. It's creepy. It, it, the pacing is really good. How it moves. Everything's intentional, and yeah. I appreciate that. I hate it when they it's got this added fluff, and it didn't need it. Like, he just... No. He made it very raw and real, and I, and I just I appreciated all of that. Yes, I 100% agree. There was a lot of tension through the whole film, and he played it up mm-hmm. well. The dialogue adds to it. The characters' actions, like, you, it makes you get involved. Like, why? Oh, my God. Then they kind of answer, and you kind of have to think about it and figure it out. Yeah. And really put some thought. I think that's really what it's all about. All right, mm-hmm. so the FX design element. Visual effects elements that connect to the narrative, set design, overall character design, gore, and the practical versus digital effects. Um, Not a whole whole lot of effects in this movie there's some blood and some throat cuts some like more action attacks kind of things um but none of it looked bad it looked really good i think the sets I were thought cool. the character design was was great yeah because like he never really explains why they're wearing what they're wearing you have to kind of like think about it but it's it definitely sets them apart it definitely kind of it's sets supposed to different. look like what what is it called hands across america or yeah, something yeah like they're all just well, red why. hands yeah she yeah she was like they were gonna wear red jumpsuits and an untethering you just cut the tether so that's why mm. they carried scissors like it all was very intentional and i loved that i thought it was mm. like that makes so much sense like they could have killed them with anything but they she chose scissors it's intentional or shears. and also from the, yeah they're shears from the mind, mind of a shears. child yeah, it's from the mind of yeah. a kid. You know what I mean? Like, wow, mm-hmm. oh, let's, let's be as literal as possible. Because she remembered that commercial. It was like, yeah. I was like, this commercial is going to come back later. I guarantee it. And no, there it comes. There, well, that's also the shirt she was wearing. You notice it in her locker and stuff yeah. like, on the wall. Like, it was like almost like a mural. Like a shrine. Like, yeah, because she becomes mural, their messiah, yeah. right? Like, she becomes mm-hmm. like their deity as a, of a sort. So, yeah, what do you think on this one? Um... This is like effects and design and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. The um, visual effects elements that connect to the narrative, set design, overall character design, go where all that jazz. I mean, they're in a house. The fun house is cool. The underground is really cool and weird. And that hallway with the little cushions and then the rabbit rooms. It's very odd, but cool. I, I think I would I would venture to say maybe um, a 20 okay. on this one. Not necessarily a 25, but it doesn't need to score any lower than a 20. No, I agree. I agree. It was. It would definitely be between the two for me. Um, like I said, this the set design. A couple of them are like houses. You know, it's just a house. Mm-hmm. It's 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 cool. Some of the things are in there and the nods. And I like it the does, 80s it does set. show the classism of, of the two. Yeah, like oh for sure. One one the white family had a little bit more, but they but they didn't. Yeah, you know they had it monet- monetarily, but they didn't have it anywhere um, else because they don't like each other. No, no, because yeah. they all hated each yeah, other. They all hated each other. They don't have. What, they don't have like, really what matters, I guess. Okay. No. So 20, I can agree with that. All right. Mm-hmm. And let's go on to the visual technical element. This is the overall aesthetic of the film is pleasing to the eye. The lighting, creative camera shots, and movement and lens selection is a 25 all It is a 25. Day. There are a couple scenes that I was, that are breathtaking. Like at the end, when Red is speaking to Addie and it's that half shot of her face and you can see Addie in the background, but it's right up on Red's eye and it's like full pupil and her eyes are moving. That is both captivating, terrifying, and beautiful all at the same time. Like it's one of the best shots I've seen in a modern horror movie. It, mm-hmm. it was a very artistic shot. It was very well done. Um, yeah, I can't say nothing I about love, it. I can't say. I love the it. shot with Pluto and Jason on Pluto's death scene. Yeah, showing yeah. how like it painting back and forth between the two and watching Jason keep backing up into and so that he would back up into the flames i thought that was just really cool um I it agree. was really sad i agree and it was. shows her she was kind of like in the front but you should see her back but you also see her reaching for pluto i, I yeah. thought that was just a really cool it way was, to do that scene it was beautiful and uh also and sad. red being like crouched down kind of hiding you know what i mean like 
She was yeah, waiting. Yeah, when when you saw when you finally like your eyes adjusted and you finally saw that she was standing there, you were like, "Oh hell yeah. no, she's about to take off with him really fast." Mm-hmm. And like so, so that yeah. scene was really cool. The their scene mm-hmm. underground when Addie's going down the escalator is a really really cool scene. It makes the escalator look like it's a mile long, and she's just kind of going yeah. down it, and it was really shot well. I love the opening scene and like the nods to The Shining. I love all that. Like I said, yeah, the lighting's it great. It's dark when it needs to be dark. Mm-hmm. It's light when it needs to be light. You know, it's and it's off putting in some spots, but it's supposed to be. I really, really enjoyed it like a lot. You know what I mean? Like you hear sound before you see <laughs> things. Uh, it was yeah, it was great. The cinematographer on this absolutely killed it. It's yeah, it's twenty five for me for sure. Twenty five, yeah. Me too. Yeah, because I mean, like, still, I mean, that shot to me is so gorgeous. Like, I want to, like, make a movie and rip it off because it was so good. Because you just get that half face, and it's like, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. it was, and the hit, like, they did it multiple times too. And the, every time, like, Addie's getting closer with her, like, fire poker, you know, and you're just like, what is going on, dude? And then, like, it was great. And then when they're fighting in the hallway and you see some of that dancing and she's dancing around her and moving and the camera just moves yeah. so well, it was so fluid. It was just really good. Yeah. And a lot of the aerial shots were good. It, yeah. It was great. Yes. I, mean, I really can't say enough about it. Uh, all right. So the last one here, sound element. So the sound represents the overall tone of the film. The soundtrack is as well as the score keeps the audience engaged with the setting characters, location and narrative. So again, that is a, the biggest 25, a 25 ever. The score made me uncomfortable. It made me feel yes. freaked out. I, I don't feel tension in movies a lot. And it was like in my chest. Yeah, I was there. Like I felt it on my skin. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> you know, and it was so well done. And I loved the use of yes. like, like I got five on it. They use it like three different ways. Uh, yeah, which is I'm cool. noted that one. Like I when she was dancing at the end, it was like a classical version of I got five on it. And they're just dancing around, but they kept tying it back to it, you know? And it had Yes, that was a beautiful scene. Really good song choices. Um, great soundtrack. Great. Johnny's always loved that about him because um didn't he do Lovecraft Country? I don't think so. Are you sure? Who did Lovecraft Country? Maybe I, I was thinking somebody else, but he who that music was good in there too. I thought it was him for some reason. It wasn't the same composer, but, um, for sure. No, no, no. I'm not I'm talking about um It wasn't Jordan Peele either. It wasn't? Dang. I thought that was who it was. Never mind. All right. Yeah, it was um let's see, composed on this one was Michael Abels. Okay. Um yeah, apparently like he got so much praise for the, the the two films, Get Out and Us. Um, he won a soundtrack award, Jerry Goldsmith Award, Critics Choice nomination, multiple critic awards. So Us was shortlisted for the Oscars and was named Score of the Decade by the Rap. Um, it was Dang. just such a good score, um, so good, so thought out and appropriate for the era and the suspense the type of film because he the music changes with the flashbacks and it fits and it's just really good so yeah there yeah i liked the that whole scene with the her dancing and all that it was really cool um yeah it was great and the the choral stuff with the tribal drums and the cymbals were it was so good and it happens right from the jump. It just got louder. Yeah. And yeah, it's like, and it ha- it's, it's louder and louder and like, oh. Yeah, and when she felt an- anxious and nervous, the music made you feel anxious and nervous. And when the family was terrified, mm-hmm. the music made you feel terrified. Like, he, it, it drug you along with it. Like, that guy is, he should have won the Oscar for this. I can almost guarantee you whoever won the Oscar that year for uh, soundtrack was not as good as this one. No, this this one was really good. This one was like sh- the shining level for me. Oh, 100%. 100%. Cause especially because, again, they kind of brought it to that. And, yeah. Ugh. It wasn't even on the list, man. Like, it really should have been on the list. I'm looking at the 92nd Academy Awards, and it, yeah, this movie should have been on there multiple times, and it was not. It really should have. They really missed it on that one. I mean, they they did, he did such a great job, and he was, he did, he picked out things that, he was very intentional in who he chose to be incorporated with the film. Uh, so, I. Yeah, I mean, and he always he is. I mean, he's, he does a great job. There's no, um. There's just nothing more you can say. It's it's a great film. No. It's acted well. It's written well. It's directed well. It's it's shot well. It's composed well. It's lit well. It's it's everything. It has a perfect amount of nods to the past without ripping off the past. Yeah. You can tell, unlike some other people like Eli Roth and things like that, who are just taking things they've, they, they've seen in other movies and they like, Jordan Peele is a true fan of this genre of cinema so like you see that come through with him truly paying homage to thing and throwing in little 
nod to things that he enjoys in ways that are not so apparent you know what i mean like are not like calling the food copper copper pots because of, of the goonies you know what i mean like even though goonies is in this yeah. as a little nod in the as a vhs that's still something that's a, a step extra you know just to be like hey look this is what we're doing and it's really cool and really appreciated and he was he produced um lovecraft country okay. i knew he was involved in lovecraft i was like i know i'm not making this up <laughs> oh, i was looking that up while you were talking i was like what what have I messed up on? It just wasn't anything in my research. I didn't see it. No, you're fine. He was just a producer on it, but still, like that's why I connected the music because Johnny was talking about how there was a scene in in Lovecraft Country where they use a um what is her name a uh, Cardi B. They use one of her songs in it, and it's like vicious. And I'm like, man, he Johnny goes, you just need to watch just for that. And I was like, probably that show was really cool. Uh, the book is really good too. Yeah, I think I'm sure it is. Because it's all about like Lovecraftian world, but then also commenting on how racist and kind of shitty he was. Like it was really good. Mm-hmm. That's cool that he was involved in that too. He he's 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 won me over for sure. Now I need to go watch Nope. Yeah, Nope is so, great. I don't yeah, think Nope is as good it. as this. Um, I'll watch Get Out and make a decision, but I'm not sure if either one will ever surpass this for me as his best movie. It's because of how it made me feel. Yeah, it was it was so good. If, yeah. if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go watch it. It is such a good movie. That and like it's a great commentary on the um privilege that we feel as Americans. Yes. And like, don't go to it thinking, oh, it's about white privilege because it's not. It's about American privilege. It's about how. Yes, how and he makes that very clear in the yeah, movie. We're special because we're cause, born here. Yeah, and that's what she says to her in the beginning. Yeah. She's like, we're Americans. Yeah. Like, we're here too. And it's also cool because it's, it's about like, Americans are also the monsters because we made them. Yeah. You know, she talks about it. It was mm-hmm. like an experiment in the 80s. They made us to control you. We made them. You know what I mean? Like, the government Mm -hmm. in the 80s, which is a really 80s, like, kind of idea, too, made these tethered people to make you do whatever you want. And it's wild. It's got some, like, Stranger Things vibes and some Twilight Zone vibes and just all kinds of, like, okay, yeah. Because doppelgangers are creepy.com anyway. And this one was... Yes, they are. Ugh. That's when he says a bunch of interviews, like, doppelgangers are scary and I wanted to put my own, like, spin and, and put my put my my ideas into the lexicon of the doppelganger genre you know or the doppelganger kind of like film library and this is one that i think will stand out amongst the crowd for years to come yes it was so good um i'm a fan he's won me over so yeah guys i mean we kind of told you all the movie now but you know go watch us anyway because you could know the whole watch it again and still watch it i'm gonna watch it again uh probably this weekend you miss stuff yeah i'll probably watch it 10 more times just to figure it out uh because it's great and yeah you got anything you want to add jenny no but i can tell everybody where to find us let's do, it, let's do it okay you can follow us on facebook and instagram at horror in the halls you can also follow jenny underscore dreadfuls on instagram and you can email us at horror in the halls at gmail.com we would love to hear from you awesome guys and i hope you're still reading along with the horror in the halls book club yes my soul to keep mm-hmm. tanner i do great book so far keep up mm-hmm. with us it really is uh, let us know what you think yeah guys so i guess that's gonna be the bell we'll see you next time Bye.